welcome everyone and in this session uh, let us discuss about the 3d viewing pipeline and particularly we will focus upon how the projection is going to be used and applied while having a 3d viewing pipeline clear so now when i'm going to talk about 3d viewing pipeline or 3d viewing so in previous session i have just told you it's similar to 2d viewing but we just need to apply few projection routines that is what I told you. The projection is going to play a major role when I talk about a 3D viewing. Hence, so now we are just going to discuss about those projection routines, how exactly it is applied. But before that, just to give a glance of what has happened in the previous session, we discussed about the projection lines, that is the parallel lines and the converging lines. So which is going to help us to understand how to differentiate the two types of projections that is the parallel projections and the perspective projections fine and even we discussed about how exactly we are going to position the camera orient the camera the up vector the up direction the direction of the camera the viewing direction all those sort of camera parameters we are discussed and even we discussed what exactly the 3d viewing pipeline is going to consist of and where exactly the projection routine is going to take part so we'll see it again we'll see in detail how this 3d wing pipeline is going to work in the open gl programming or open gl system and apart from this so we are derived the uvn vectors the 3d viewing the 3d viewing coordinate parameters so we know what is the direction vector in the form of x axis we know what is the up vector in the form of v vector in the form of y axis and the normal vector in the form of z axis finance we have discussed about all these things so somewhere so this will contribute uh, not majorly but it is going to contribute as the base to discuss about the 3d viewing further with respect to 3d viewing pipeline and particularly the projection routines yeah so now in this term so now in this term we are just going to have a 3d viewing pipeline the same what I discussed in the previous session. So now hence in this session if you observe we have modeling transformation. So it is just uh, taking the model coordinate system so which is going to fit into the world coordinate system. And so there's nothing the projection will come into picture over here. And so nothing to worry much about and discuss much about in the modeling transformation. But the major work will come from the viewing transformation, the projection transformation and how do we normalize this and how we are going to make use of the viewport transformation to have the device coordinate. So this is what exactly the 3D viewing pipeline is going to work with and so right now we will just focus upon the viewing transformation that is how exactly we are going to transform the word coordinate into viewing coordinate. So later on, step by step, we will see the other blocks too. And so now when we talk about the transformation from word to viewing coordinate, and this is the first step, uh, once the scene has been constructed, that is once the modeling object has been brought into the word co coordinate, that is where the scene has been constructed and we say the scene has been designed. So now it is how we are going to make this word coordinate system to appear into the viewing coordinate system. Yes, so usually we call this as the first step after a scene which has been constructed. And so now in this case, so we are going to take the word coordinate as a reference and it's a 3D viewing. Hence, we need to consider the z-axis too. Hence, we are going to have the word coordinate system and we are going to have the view coordinate system. Right. So now whenever you want to take the transformations, there are two steps which we need to usually follow. Right. So the step will follow by keeping the word coordinate as a reference. And the first step, once having this as a reference, the first step is you need to translate, you need to translate the view coordinate in such a way that the origin of the view coordinate will be exactly at the origin of the word coordinate. This is the first step, the translation which we need to apply. The second step is that you need to rotate or orient the view coordinate axis such a way that it will be in line and intact parallel 
with the word coordinate and the word axis. So this is what you need to do whenever you want to have a transformation from word to viewing coordinate. These are the two steps which you need to follow. Hence, so now we, with these two steps, now we are going to have the translation matrix. So where we are going to say minus x0, minus y0, minus z0. That is where exactly we are going to bring the viewing coordinate to the origin of a window coordinate. Once this has been done, we are going to use the rotation matrix and this rotation matrix is going to make use of the three parameters of the world coordinate system that is u v n u x u y u z similarly the v vectors and the n vector fine so now this are the two matrices which we are going to use for the translation and for the rotation purpose and so whenever you want to have from the word coordinate to view coordinating transformation so we need to multiply the rotation matrix with the translation matrix which we are going to end with a matrix which is going to tell me what how we are going to convert a word to a viewing coordinate system if i if i multiply the given reference point the given object point which is going to be in form of vector norm. When I say P0, it contains set of X, Y, Z values. Hence, we are going to have X0, Y0, Z0 in this vector. Similarly, in the other vectors too. Because U is a vector, I'm going to have the cross product of the vectors. Cross product of the vector and so on. Now, by applying this matrix, we will be successfully able to transform the word coordinate to a viewing coordinate system. Fine. So now this is how the viewing transformation is going to happen. So now we will just see how the projection transformation is going to happen in your system. And as I said, this is the major task or important task which should happen in this entire pipeline. Hence, so we'll just focus majorly upon this and discuss somewhat in detail of how exactly the projection transformation is going to take happen in the 3D, view, 3D viewing pipeline. So when I talk about projection transformation, uh, it is the next object description which to be projected to the view plane. That is, so right now a scene has been defined and from the word coordinate the scene has been taken into the into the screen coordinate and from this screen coordinate we are going to talk about the projection transformation which will take it to the view plane hence so as i have discussed earlier in the previous session so these are the two types of projections what you are going to have we are going to have parallel projection and we are going to have perspective projection and just look at this difference so i'll just tell you what exactly this is going to mean all about so now when I'm going to have parallel lines, I'm going to have the projection lines is going to be in parallel, which will be projected towards the view plane. Whereas in this case, the line is going to converge at this convergence point and the view plane is going to have non-parallel lines. The projection lines right now are not parallel. Hence we call this as parallel projection or this can also be called as orthogonal projection. So usually, usually we never use the term parallel projection. So technically we are going to call this as orthogonal projection, but uh, both are same at the back end. Fine. And so now we are going to have perspective projection. So where we are going to have the converging lines. Now just to look at this, the object, whatever the size the object is going to have, the same size of the object is projected to the view plane. But in this case, the size has been reduced. The size has been reduced. Now, if I move this view plane near to the object, the object will increase the size. If I move it away from the object and towards the convergence point, the object appears smaller. Hence, now in this case, the object remains same. Hence, we say, in orthogonal projection which is going to preserve the relative proportions of the object without any modification or without any increase or decrease whereas in the perspective projection it's just the opposite will never preserve the relative proportions of an object and this is what you need to understand about 
parallel projections and the perspective projections and now we'll just look what exactly the octagonal projection is going to be all about so now object in a view plane along the lines that all are parallel to the vector n so now this is the z axis this is the normal vector for us because this is perpendicular to the projection plane and so now whatever the projection lines you are going to take will be always parallel to the vector n or the z axis by default what it happens hence for this case whatever the object we are going to have it is going to be in parallelly projected on the projection plane hence so now with this we are going to use this orthogonal projection whenever we want to have any of the drawing designs the cad drawings the engineering drawings so usually whenever we are going to have such drawings we are going to make use of orthogonal projection because it is going to retain the size and the proportion of the object intact which is necessary for us in the engineering drawing but it's not realistic because in the real world in the 3d environment whenever we talk about projection the projection is not parallel projection by default it is going to be a perspective projection but if we talk about any other engineering drawing or such models the orthogonal projection will be an efficient one fine and so now when am i going to have a view volume fine so in 2d viewing if you are able to remember in 2d viewing it was just a small rectangle which we call this as clipping volume or we call this as clipping area fine so this is is of a 2d and so only one clip in area was sufficient for us but now i am moving into 3d viewing now i need a need a volume for this now fine so rather than having just a rectangle now i need a cube now the cube which will tell me the view volume whatever is going to be inside this cube similar to whatever is in the clipping rectangle will be projected remaining will be clipped off similar to that whatever is going to be in the cube now that will be projected and remaining all the objects will be removed from the view that is what we call this as view volume if you just observe here now the cube what you are seeing the parallel lines along with the parallel lines we are going to have near clip plane and the far clip plane now this is going to form me a cube now whatever is going to be inside this cube will be projected if the object is going to be outside the cube for example this particular pink sphere is outside the cube hence it is not projected on to the view or the view plane hence now we are going to have a clipping window which is defined using any of a uv and parameters and we are going to have the view volume so which is going to be a cube and literally it's not going to be strictly a cube it is going to be something like a parallel pipe hence rather than calling this as an cube because the size or the length of all the side is not going to be same and rather than calling this as a cube we are going to call this as a rectangular parallel pipe hence the orthogonal projection is the easiest projection you need not modify any point if it is x project x on the clipping window if it is y project y on the clipping window the only thing you need here is you need to form a view volume you need to form a rectangular parallel pipe to view volume that is the only important factor what which you need to consider when you're talking about a orthogonal projection but this is not the same in perspective projection because the object is not intact y is not equal to y on the clipping window z is not equal to z on the clipping window there are n number of transformations modifications calculation should happen when i talk about perspective projection at the other end the orthogonal projection is the easiest projection which just stays the object intact and just displays it on the clipping window similar to the 2d viewing plane hence 
Now this is what orthogonal projection is going to be all about. Now we'll discuss about perspective projection. So nothing, any equation is not involved in this because now once you define a parallel piped view volume, now this is similar to your 2D projection of an object on a clipping window or a view plane. Hence, there's no much matrix or the equations involved in orthogonal projection. But if you talk about perspective projection, we need some specific calculations and equations in the matrix which we need to bring into account. And so carefully understand how the perspective projection is going to work in your program. Hence, now when I have a perspective projection, objects are displayed with four short tink effects. That is, if the object is nearer, appears larger. If the same object is far, it appears smaller. That is what we are going to have. And whenever you are going to have an orthogonal projection, for example, which doesn't have a reference point, which doesn't have such projection reference point because no race is going to converge only you have a direction of a reference point but not the exact point where the lines is going to meet but in perspective you are going to have a projection reference point through which we are going to define what is the projection angle what is the projection area whether the object is near and i should i should display it as a large or the object is far should i make it small all this calculation will be focused upon the projection reference point itself. Hence, this is the major concept when you talk about perspective projection. Again, I am repeating, clearly understand. If it is an orthogonal projection, there is nothing called as projection reference point. You have only direction of the reference point. But whereas in perspective, you have a projection reference point which will define the converging point and which will define the emerging of a projection lines and even this will define you the direction of the projection also hence for this reason we will call this as center of projection that is cop in short fine so now with this perspective projection let us see how the transformation is going to happen because as i told you it's not a straight away transformation the way it happens in orthogonal projection. Hence, now when I talk about perspective projection, I am going to have a point as an object right now. As an object, I am considering a point that is x, y, z, and I am going to have a reference point. This is what I told you. We need to have a reference point, and we call this as x, p, r, p, y, p, r, p, z, p, r, p. So, p, r, p stands for projection, projection point. PR is for projection, P is for point. Hence, we are going to have a projection point over here. And this is the view plane. And depending upon this projection point, and depending upon the object, we will see how this object will be displayed on the view plane. And once this object is on the view plane, we call this as XP, YP, and ZVP. And we are using here ZVP because it is just the Z value of the viewport where the viewport will be in line between these two points, the object and the reference point. But if we talk about this view plane, even in 3D viewing, clearly understand, even in 3D viewing, the view plane is going to be 2D itself. Hence, we will just make sure we are going to project x y z point as x p and y p and the z will be used to position the view plane in between these two points clear and this is how we are going to work with perspective projection transformation hence now this whatever x p y p we are going to have or z v p we are going to have that is what the new value we are going to form that is the x dash y dash z dash what we need to find and this is the form what you are going to use. So where this depends upon x minus x projection point multiplied with u. I will just tell you what is u. Right? And again should be subtracted with the x value of the point. Similarly with the y and the z. 
and just look at this u value now how this u value is defined now this u value will tell me where is the view plane clearly understand this u is going to tell me where is the view plane for me this view plane can be anywhere in between these two points that is what we are going to say now for example right now the view plane is going to be at p is going to be at p or this can move to the reference point itself or i can make this view plane can be anywhere in between near to the reference point or it can be near to the object anywhere in this line in this distance it can be it can be position so now in case if i am going to position this view plane at p we will say u is zero u is going to be zero hence when u is zero if i substitute u as zero this entire term will be zero and x dash will be x y dash will be y z dash will be z this is what is going to work and in case if this point is going to be at the x reference u is going to be one that's the maximum this is the minimum and maximum in between this you can choose whatever the u value want to make the view plane to be at the certain position to be placed hence when a u is one i'm going to replace with u as one and this is multiplied with one and this gets cancelled and x dash is x reference y dash is y reference and so on and similarly you can use wherever the point is going to be now for example if this point is going to be on the view plane currently wherever it is that is now x dash will be xp y dash will be yp and z dash will be zvp the viewport point hence when i say z dash equals zvp so we are going to have u equals now u will be defined as whatever at this point now in this case it's zero and in this case this is one so now anything in between should be computed what the u is going to be hence now u is going to depend upon this z vp value at z vp minus z divided by z reference minus z this will give me the value of u anything in between 0 and 1 clear so now once i know what is the value of u i will just try to substitute i will just try to substitute i know what is z dash so z dash is directly z vp nothing to compute about z dash here i need to compute what is x dash and i need to compute what is y dash depending upon the value of u hence we are going to have xp which is x dash which is going to be x of zprp minus Z, zvp so just substitute value of u simplify you're going to get this form similarly we are going to have for yp i'm going to have the form for yp and this is how we are going to project a point on a perspective projection plane so now keeping this point we know that this is this view plane can be anywhere between 0 and 1 and so we are going to have different cases now so we are going to have few special cases whenever you're going to move this plane the case one is whenever this reference point x and y reference point is going to be at 0 and z is going to be anywhere but this is going to be at 0 when this is at 0 we say the projection reference point is fixed at the coordinate origin it's fixed it's not going to move so in that case so if i make x prp and y prp to be zero i'm going to have one more simplest form the x p and y p this is the first special case where we are going to have the reference point to be fixed at the coordinate origin and the case two is we are going to have all the three along with x y reference point the z reference point also is going to be at the origin if this is true then view plane is going to be the same as uv plane there is no difference between v plane and the uv plane and in this case if i substitute zero this is a simplified form so this is going to be the case two and in the case three we are going to have zvp is going to be zero we'll make zvp to be zero 
and it's going to be at exactly the reference point and I don't know what is x and y reference point is going to can be anything. So in such case we call uv plane as the view plane. Yeah. So we add view plane so which is going to be same as uv plane but now the uv plane is overlapped with the view plane and just substitute the value of zvp and I'm going to get the simplified form for xp and yp. And the fourth case, the last case, we are going to have x reference, y reference and zvp is going to be zero now. So don't get confused with this case two and case four. In case two, all the three x reference, y reference and z reference was zero. But now z reference need not be zero, but zvp is zero. In this case, the projection reference point is on the view plane. We say the projection reference point is appeared on the view plane and substitute we are going to get this as a simplified form. So the four special cases which we are going to have when you talk about a projection or a perspective projection. Now keeping all this in mind. So just once one thing what we can derive from this. We need to have a center of projection in form of camera and where the projection line will start emitting and in this case I need to have a view plane which will be placed in between the object and the camera and that view plane should be able to capture the object and project it and while projecting it is going to consider the projection point it is going to consider the point on the object and decides what case it is depending upon the case it is going to put the appropriate object on the view plane so whence so if you remember the orthogonal projection view volume was a rectangular parallel pipe or it e, e, have to be simple a cube but now when you talk about perspective projection view volume it is going to be a rectangular pyramid with its apex at the center of projection now this is going to be apex if i visualize this i'll just i'll, I'll just make you visualize this so let, let me rotate this now so now just look at it. Now this is going to look like a pyramid and it's not a triangle pyramid, it's a rectangle pyramid. Hence we say rectangular pyramid and it's infinite. Right now, right now there is no near plane, there is no far plane. If I remove these two bounds, this is going to be infinite, infinite rectangular pyramid. Hence we call this as infinite rectangular pyramid and where the apex of this rectangular pyramid is at the center of projection and so in such case we call this as pyramid of vision whatever is going to be in this pyramid will be displayed and we call this as cone of vision this is how the human eye is also going to work it's going to have infinite rectangular pyramid starting the center of projection is going to be the eyes and starting from the eyes it's going to emit the projection lines which is going to have an infinite rectangular pyramid here and this is going to be a cone of vision such case and so having this for this infinite vision if i am going to put the bound this is the limit what you want to see and this is the limit from where you want to see if i try to put those two limits that is what we call this near plane and what we call this as the far plane and now whatever will be inside this bounded area now what is going to be in bounded area will be only visible even if the object is too close out of near plane will not be visible though it is in the view will not be visible and if the object is out of the forklift plane will not be visible should be inside this area only now it is not exactly a cube because both the faces are not seen. The near face is small, the far face is large. Hence, we call this as truncated pyramid because the pyramid apex is out of my view right now. Hence, we call this as truncated pyramid. And now we cannot call this as Q. Hence, we can call this as first term. We are going to call this as first term. Hence, clearly listen and understand orthogonal projection view volume is a parallel pipe and the perspective projection view volume is a first term clear 
so now this is what the view volume is going to be and this is what i've just i just explained we are going to have near clip plane we are going to have far clip plane a reference point or center of projection and the rectangular first term view volume fine and whatever is going to be inside this area in this first term will be displayed to this clipping window now this clipping window can be on this near clipping plane or it can be near to the reference point or this can be in bit inside the first term or it can go outside the first term but just imagine what happens if it goes outside the first term nothing will be displayed if it's inside only part of the scene will be displayed and so make sure you choose a appropriate position for the clipping window when you are going to have perspective projection and so now uh, we are going to have a point we need to project this so right now we have set what is the view plane is going to be the view plane is set the first term is set the view volume is set your next job is you need to project this object onto the view plane that is what you need to do and concentrate in this case and when you want to do this we are going to work in homogeneous coordinate representation if you remember this is what we talked about transformation the homogeneous coordinate representation of a transformation matrix that is what we need to transform hence we are bringing in the transformation matrix into picture again hence now the homogeneous code parameter whatever the h we are going to have this is going to be the z projection point minus z the actual point this is going to be the homogeneous parameter and the xp value what i am going to put it on the plane the view plane the xp we are going to form this as xh the homogeneous x value divided by homogeneous what exactly i am going to have similarly for yp and now using this form I am going to have xh is going to be x into zprp plus x projection xvp minus z. So whatever, whatever the points earlier we had for x dash and y dash, we are going to use the same form over here with the reference and with the z as the vp. And so with this, we are going to have a matrix representation which is going to make the transformation is going to happen hence we are going to have m perspective the matrix for perspective projection is z reference minus z viewport for the x value similarly for the y value and if you just observe we are using the z scale factor because the z axis is the one which will define me whether the object is nearer to the view plane or far to the view plane. Hence, if it is nearer, I need to scale down. If it is far, I need to scale up. If it is the same position, keep it intact. Hence, the, if the scaling factor is applied, it is only applied with the z axis. Hence, we are going to use sz. And we are going to use minus 1 m because the negative z axis will be used for the projection. And the positive axis will be used for the object definition. If you want, you can reverse this later. But this is the default what happens. And this is the transformation which should happen. So using the references point of X and Z, we are going to find what the transformation value is going to have. Use the value of Y and Z. And that is the transformation what is going to happen. And the transformation value depending upon where exactly the view plane is going to be is going to tell me what is the translation with respect to z axis is going to be and this is the direct z reference point what we are going to use now this is the matrix what we want to use whenever we want to have a perspective projection with respect to transforming a point to an to a view plane which is going to be with xp, yp and zp. Fine. So now uh, this matrix should be applied to find the actual point what I am going to display on the view plane. So as I told you which should be used and multiplied with the actual object or the actual point. And this is a homogeneous point which is made up of xh, yh, zh and h. 
and whereas p the point is going to be x y z and the homogeneous value is going to be by default one this is how we are going to do the perspective projection fine so when i talk about a 3d viewing pipeline now this is what in the projection transformation is going to happen so now if i'm going to talk about the next block we will see how exactly the projection transformation is going to take a transition to a normalize normalization form now we'll just see how exactly the normalization is going to happen once we are going to have the projection coordinate so now when we're going to talk about the normalization that is what exactly we are going to talk about putting a point on exactly the view plane hence the screen whatever you're going to have the display screen whatever you're going to have it is going to contain a viewport which is going to be a 2d rectangle and we are going to have a graphics window this again a 2d rectangle we have a screen which is again a 2d rectangle and so whatever we are going to project we are going to project making use of the normalization only and so whatever the point we are going to have x y z defined as 3d we are going to project it as x y only and the z will be used as a depth value later on for later processing which we'll discuss in the next session coming session but right now just focus we need to project only the x and y and so in this case we are going to have orthogonal projection view volume for example or even this can be the perspective projection view volume any view volume what i'm going to have when i'm going to project this to the normalized coordinate system which is a unit coordinate system now i'm going to have one as the maximum x minus one as a minimum x similarly for y and z this is all the maximum and the minimum value again this is going to be a cubic coordinate system similar to rectangular unit system this is going to be a cubic coordinate system so now using this form we are just going to convert from the orthogonal projection to normalization this is the matrix what we are going to use we are going to use such matrix whenever we want to form a normalization so if it is from orthogonal to normal this is the matrix what we are going to make use of and if it is from perspective to normal we are going to use appropriate perspective matrix fine so now in this i have just taken an example of orthogonal projection and how we are going to convert to normalization this is the matrix what you are going to use now if you just observe we are going to have the x and y value which is defined only with the window coordinates we are just going to use only the window coordinates so we are not going to use any z value or the any z viewport value over here that is we are going to consider as 1 and 1 and so 1 minus of minus 1 will give me 2 and so we are going to have this form similarly it happens for this two case and in this we are just going to work on z near and the z for value and this will tell me what is the scaling factor should be whether the object should be increase the size or whether the object is going to be of the same size and we are going to have we are just going to have the translation value which depends upon the window max value and the window minimum value so nowhere we are going to use the orthogonal value so this is how the normalization we are going to do once we are going to have the transformation and so now you can just relate this with this this with the 2d tra normal transformation what we add it is similar to that it is going to be similar to that because we are going to have x w max and x v min so where this v min has been replaced with 1 and i'm just going to have this matrix form for tx and ty and this is going to be sx where we are going to have x v max replaced with 1 minimum is replaced with minus 1 this gives me 2 and so i'm going to have 2 divided by x w max minus x w minimum so similar to that we are going to compute other forms Yes, these are the equations what I have been just uh, re uh, I've just put over here just to give a reference how the 2D transformations 
was used whenever we are going to have a 2D viewing. Hence, just for your reference, which we are used to form this equations. And this is how the normalization is going to happen using the matrix. And next in the pipeline, so we are going to have how we are going to make this normalized coordination or the coordinate to pass through the viewport transformation. Hence, so now when you are going to have viewport transformation, we are going to have normalized viewport volume and which you need to put it on the viewport. Hence, so we call this as a 3D screen. But rather, it's not a 3D screen, it is going to be a 2D viewing area itself. And for that, we are going to eliminate all the Z values in this matrix. And we are going to have viewport values, hence the viewport will be used. But there is no window values, hence W max is replaced with 1, minimum is minus 1. 1 minus of minus 1 will be 2, no for me. Similarly for the y and now this is going to be 1 by 2. So this is exactly, so when I say 1 by 2, that is the view area is exactly in between the object and the reference point. If you change the value of you anywhere of your choice, it is going to alter and it will tell me what is the scaling factor should be. And this is going to be the translation value and this is going to be with the x and the y and the z translation value. And this is how we are going to convert from a viewport transformation or a normal coordinate transformation to viewport and to a 3D coordinate screen coordinate system. And this is what we are going to have the 3D viewing pipeline. So you should know what is view, what happens in the view transformation, the matrix what we are going to use with the translate and rotate the two steps and the two types of projection transformation, the orthogonal as well as perspective and the normalization, what coordinate system we are going to use and how we are going to pass it to the viewport transformation to get the device coordinates. Fine. So now when I talk about, uh, just to give an additional information in this case, when I talk about a perspective projection, clearly observe here, whenever we are going to have a perspective projection, now this is going to be the reference point and this is going to be the object. And so this is going to be the view plane. The view plane can be anywhere in between this object and the reference point, what I have already told. Hence the view plane is usually placed between the projection reference point and an object. Hence now this can be moved. So if I want, I can move the projection plane towards the object, which makes the object to appear larger and I can move it away which will make this to appear smaller and even further I can move but now whenever going to have a projection plane this should never happen. The projection plane should not be never placed on the reference point. That is what view plane could be placed anywhere except at the projection point. Hence I am not supposed to do this. Hence if I am going to now just look at this, I can make the reference point to appear between the view plane and the object. But if I do so, just look what happens. If I want to flip the object, I can use this trick. I am just going to make the reference point to appear between the object and the view plane, which is going to give me such. So if I am going to move the reference point again back and make the view plane to be between the object and the reference point, I'm going to get the object to be in the same orientation. But if I move it, it's going to flip. And this is the one trick what we can use in our OpenGL synthetic camera, which is not possible in the actual camera. And so now, if I'm going to have a perspective point, projection reference point, through which we call this as center of projection and the clipping window or the view plane what we talk about, the size of the view plane window and the reference point will define me what is the angle of view. Right now, this is the angle of view. So later on, if I move this clipping window away from the projection plane, you can observe it is going to narrow down the view. The view will be narrowed down. And if I move the clipping window near to the projection reference point, the reference or the view is going to be widened up. Clear? So this is how you can play with this. 
So depending upon the ref projection reference point and the clipping window, you can now control what is the view volume is going to be and how and what is the angle of view is going to be. You can control all the such parameters. And now this is what happens in perspective. And what happens if the projection point disappears and will be placed or will move to it in indefinite or infinite position. In that case, there is no reference point. You have only direction of the projection reference point which will make the angle to be parallel. And so now you need not or you cannot call this as perspective effect. This should be called as orthogonal special effect or the special form of perspective. When I take the projection reference point to an infinite distance by having only the direction of it. And this is what we are going to talk about the projections and one more important note to make when you talk about perspective projection there's something called as vanishing point you might have heard about this you have experienced this i'll just tell you what this vanishing point is going to be so the parallel lines in a scene that are not parallel to the view plane are projected into converging lines now to understand this line so we are just going to have an example just look at this we are going to have non-parallel lines which is going to converge at one point. Now you can relate how this is going to be. And we call this as converging point or we call this as vanishing point. Yes, so it's all the non-parallel lines which is converging over here. And if there's any other object which is going to be intact, not with the parallel, it is not going to converge. But a scene can have one converging point, something like even this. And even the scene can have more than one converging point. Now all this lines is going to converge at this point and all this line is going to converge at this point and so on. Hence this is what the converging point or the vanishing point is going to be with the perspective projection. If I am going to have perspective projection, so this is what you are going to have. And when you are going to have vanishing point, you can have one vanishing point depending upon how you orient the object and how you going to set up the projection point and the reference point or it may contain two vanishing points and sometimes even this may contain three vanishing point also now this is what you need to understand about the 3d viewing and the 3d viewing pipeline thank you